Hi there. Are you having trouble deciding which lens to choose between the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 USM and the Yongduo EF 50mm f1.8 in the current year? Worry no more, because in this video we will examine both lenses thoroughly, identifying their pros and cons to help you decide which lens is the one for you. Let's get started. First off, can these lenses take good images? Let's start with sharpness. Regarding these two, I would say that the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 USM lens is sharper overall than the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens. In almost every case, you will discover that with more budget lenses, when you closely examine your image, sharpness may not be even across the entire frame. Generally speaking, lenses will be sharper in the center of the image than on the edges. In addition to that, their sharpness will change depending on your current aperture and also your focal length. Okay, now, do they exhibit vignetting? In our particular example, the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 USM lens exhibits some, while the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens shows quite a bit. Vignetting shows up as darkening of the corners of the photograph, resulting from objects and how lenses function. So because of that, any lens will have some, no matter how expensive. This will not be a huge issue though, due to the fact that vignetting is often no problem at all to correct in Lightroom or whatever software you use. I usually keep the vignetting in my photographs as I think it often gives them more depth. Okay, so do they suffer from chromatic aberration? When it comes to these two, both of them have some. Chromatic aberration usually occurs during low light conditions, such as sunrise. It very often manifests as a color bleed along straight edges in the photo. Most people will never point this out, but knowing that both of these lenses exhibit it will be very useful. Practically any lens can, although more budget lenses have a tendency to exhibit it a lot more. In case you aren't aware, zoom lenses tend to exhibit more chromatic aberration when compared to fixed focal length lenses. Next up, what about IS? Nope, actually none of these lenses has image stabilization. This is not fantastic as IS helps stabilize videos and it reduces motion blur in photos. Most of the time, I film quite a lot of my B-roll with a lens which is stabilized specifically the Canon RF 15-35mm f2.8 LIS USM. Link down below if you want to check out how much it costs in your country. Now, what about autofocus? When it comes to these two lenses, the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 USM lens is powered by the USM motor, which simply stands for Canon's ultrasonic motor, while the Yongnuo is equipped with the Yongnuo motor, which is basically just Canon's DC motor. In terms of USM, more high-end lenses make use of it. Its autofocus is smooth and even though it is almost silent, it is in fact noisier than the SDM motor. This is why lenses more aimed at video have SDM in the name, while those more intended for photography use the USM motor. When it comes to the Yongnuo's autofocusing performance, let's just say that it's not ideal. It often struggles to find focus and when it does actually do it, it might need a few tries to get there. If you're mostly interested in slow moving subjects, then that won't necessarily be as much of a problem. If however, you're primarily interested in sports or wildlife, you'll be frustrated with the Yongnuo. In addition to that, the lens also makes quite a bit of noise as the little motor happily chugs away in an effort to focus. To be fair, remember that this lens still does quite a lot for its price. It's not an expensive lens at all, so it will have limitations. If you want your lens to work flawlessly, get ready to drop a few grand on it. So what is their minimum focusing distance? As some of you might know, minimum focusing distance means the closest distance at which lenses can focus on any subject. Take for instance when you're trying to capture a photo of a small object. The closer you get, it will become apparent that at a certain point, the camera will not be able to focus. In simpler terms, lenses with a shorter minimum focusing distance allow you to get closer to what you are trying to take an image of, thus giving you the chance to capture a much closer look. In our case, both the EF 50mm f1.8 and the EF 50mm f1.4 have the same minimum focusing distance of 45cm, 
or 17.72 inches. If you found this video to be useful, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to check out any of the products I've mentioned in this video, you can find affiliate links down below. Is either of these lenses suitable for vlogging? Unfortunately, both of these lenses have some limitations regarding this application. Neither lens is well suited for handheld vlogging. One major drawback is that neither lens has built-in image stabilization, or IS. This can lead to shaky footage, which is usually undesired for vlogging. Having it done optically in the lens is considered the best form of image stabilization. If you plan to use these lenses with an in-body image stabilization or IBIS camera, like the Canon R5, it can mitigate the absence of IS in the lens itself. However, you will need an EF to RF adapter to use either of these EF lenses on an RF mount camera like the R5. There is another concern that you need to keep in mind. Both the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 and the Yong Nuo lens have a relatively zoomed in view, which can be problematic when you're vlogging without a tripod. Even with a Gorillapod, their focal lengths may still be too zoomed in for handheld vlogging. The final output may appear excessively zoomed in on your face, rendering the footage useless. Are you someone who is interested in making videos with your camera on a tripod rather than vlogging? Both lenses would be sufficient in this scenario, but the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 is superior as it has a wider aperture. This lens allows more light, meaning it can capture footage in low light settings more efficiently than the Yong Nuo f1.8 lens. Furthermore, the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 produces better bokeh than the Yong Nuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens. When you use a tripod for filming, image stabilization is no longer a concern. Now, which cameras can I use these two lenses on? When it comes to these two lenses, both of them work with camera bodies that are either EF or EF slash EFS. Fortunately, EF slash EFS camera bodies are most of Canon's DSLRs, especially the more affordable ones. The list would include cameras like the Canon 600D, the Rebel series, and so on. Just so you know, I've reviewed all the cameras mentioned. If you'd like to have a look at them, there is a link provided down below. Additionally, you can watch these reviews by clicking on the card in the top right corner. What about focal length and aperture? Both lenses have the same focal length of 50mm. This number refers to the magnification of the lens. The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lens has a wider aperture than the Yong Nuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens. When you are in a low light setting, you can modify the lens aperture, ISO and shutter speed to increase the camera's light intake. Even though shutter speed and ISO can help to some extent, there is a physical limit to the aperture specifically f1.8 and f1.4 in this case. If you decrease your shutter speed, your pictures have a higher chance of causing motion blur. A smaller f number signifies a broader aperture, resulting in more light on the sensor. However, setting the ISO too high will cause unpleasant noise to appear in your images. A lens with a larger aperture is preferable since it can allow more light to reach the sensor. Now, the two lenses under consideration are both prime lenses as their fixed focal lengths put them in that category. What makes someone opt for a prime lens instead of a zoom lens? Although zoom lenses offer greater flexibility, prime lenses are better at creating sharper pictures. Both lens types have their pros and cons. To choose the best lens for a specific shot, some photographers and filmmakers prefer to start with a variable lens to test various focal lengths quickly. Once they've found the right focal length for the shot, they'll switch to a sharper prime lens with the proper focal length. When it comes to focal length, which one is best for photography? Each focal length has its unique outcomes and can cause different distortions. For example, a wider lens captures a greater field of view, while the 50mm lens from the same distance captures less. However, the lens you use depends on your photography goals. It's important to note that different focal lengths distort the subject's appearance in a photo. Generally, 85mm lenses are considered ideal for portraits due to their flattering representation of the human face. The 50mm focal length is a close second to the 85mm. 
How portable are these lenses? The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lens has dimensions of 73.8 by 50.5mm or 2.9 by 2 inches and a weight of 290 grams or 10.23 ounces. Meanwhile, the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens measures 73 by 55mm or 2.87 by 2.17 inches and weighs 120 grams or 4.2 ounces. The two share a similar size, but the f1.4 lens is heavier. The lenses are both solidly built but have a somewhat plastic feel. If you want to know the current pricing for these lenses in your area, you can check out the affiliate links listed below. Next up, how difficult are these lenses to use? First, these two are equipped with manual focus rings, allowing you to control your focus by hand if that's what you want to do. Now, both of these two are prime, so there's obviously no zoom ring available. How much lifespan can you anticipate from these lenses? Firstly, it's important to consider whether the mount of the lens is made of metal or plastic. The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lens has a metal mount, which is a plus, whereas the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.8 lens doesn't. The weather sealing of the lenses is also an important factor to be aware of, and it is particularly important to know the type of weather sealing. It is not ideal that neither of these lenses has it. Using a UV filter is a common practice for photographers to add an additional layer of protection to the lens element. You may find it worthwhile to consider using Sigma ceramic UV filters. These filters offer an additional layer of protection to your lenses, especially the more expensive ones, which can make the higher price point worth it. By attaching a filter to your lens, you can eliminate the need to use lens caps, but you can still use them whenever you want. Also, it is vital to consider the filter size while purchasing filters for these lenses, as it differs from their focal lengths. The filter size of the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lens is 58mm, while the filter size of the Yongnuo EF 50mm f1.4 lens is 52mm. Some people confuse filter size with focal length, so pay close attention to ensure you get the right size filter. I really hope that you have found this review helpful. In case you are curious as to how much these lenses cost where you are, you can find affiliate links below for your convenience. If you would like to watch more of my video reviews, you can either have a look down below for relevant links or click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions about the products? Feel free to comment below and I'll certainly do my best to get back to you. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a like, subscribe and hit that bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.